Where are we at at the moment in extension 2? We have been looking in the 3D coordinate system trying to understand geometry and, uh, and reasoning within. That's what we most recently looked at on Friday's lesson. Um, and using the new tools at our disposal, dot products and projection and all the rest to do that, right? Um, we're going to continue in that same vein, but it's going to feel like we're going to momentarily take a step backwards to something which looks much simpler. Equations of lines. So here's where I would like us to begin. In the 2D space, not in the 3D space, in the 2D space, lines, equations of lines are really, really easy. Um, for example, and jot this down with me, right? It's actually very important. If you were to consider something like x plus y equals 1. This is, um, in fact, I'm going to, let's go x plus 2y. You'll see why in a second. x plus 2y. Doesn't seem like it makes so much of a difference, but x plus 2y equals 1, this is a straight line. You can probably tell me a few things about it as well. If, you, if I asked you to graph it, I don't need to because I think you understand it enough. The really important thing I need you to understand, because it's going to give a surprising conclusion or surprising result in 3D, is why. Why is it that this equation gives us a line? Like you've known this for so long, you've probably not recently or maybe even ever thought about it gives you a line, but why does it give you a line? Let me try and unpack this for you, right? And you can jot this down with me, right? If, for example, I took some value of x, I don't know, like x equals 0, right? And I substituted it in. What would happen to y? There would be one value for it, right? Uh, in this case, I guess it would be a half, right? And there's nothing else that y could be. If x equals 0, that tells you that y equals a half. No ifs or buts, right? If I try another x value, you can just down with me, uh, like say x equals 1. Right? Then what you would get is that, or 1 here, 1 here, they cancel. So in this case, y would be 0. zero. Thank you. I know it's the end of the day. We can do this. We're extension 2. Okay? So my point here is, as you keep on putting in new x values, you get this very specific y value out. And if I were to just keep on doing this forever, right? every x value gives you another point. Every x value gives you another point. And a collection of points, if I did this forever, a collection of points is indeed a line. line. And that's what we were after. But if we were to try and say, because we've done this a lot in this topic, and quite successfully a lot of the time, if we were to say, like, do you remember with dot product? It's like, ah, stuff that works in 2D, let's just see if it works in 3D. And sometimes it's great with some modification. What would happen if we tried to say, extend this into 3D. I obviously need like a third variable there and it could be any I've arbitrarily chosen coefficients. How about something like this? Right? I just chucked a Z in there, right? Would this give us a straight line? Now, if you have successfully opened up 3D GeoGebra, go ahead in the top left hand corner and just type in this as it, sa as it says, right? X plus 2Y minus Z equals 1. Uh, this actual thing? No, not this actual equation, but something like it. Well, let's see if it's still gonna go somewhere interesting. Okay, um, did you did you graph something? Did you get it? Hands up if you've got something there. Hands up. One, two, three, four. Great. Thank you. Hands down. Okay. Well done. Let me ask a simple question first. Did you get a line? No. No. How disappointing. We got a plane out of this. And you can, of course, spin it around and you can see from different angles, right? Now, I'm going to ask you, and this is why I said, why does this give you a line, right? The question you should ask of this is exactly the same. Why does this give us a plane? And we can see the answer if we just tried the same thing that we did before. Watch, right? Let's just give this a go. Here's my x, right? What if I tried putting in something like x equals 0? What result do I get for, now I have to consider not just y, I have to consider y. z as well, right? So I would get 2y minus z equals 1. Now, not a rhetorical question. How many solutions are there to this equation for y and z? There's an infinite number of solutions. In fact, not just an infinite number of solutions. I have, just look at this for a second, and compare it with the first thing that I wrote here. Isn't this an infinite set of solutions in a straight line. Do you agree? Yeah. 
Does that, does that make sense? So here, you try one x value and you get a point. But here you try an x value and you get a line. A line. And then, if you have the audacity to try again, right, then you get, well, in this case, um, the 1 and the 1 will cancel. So you get 2y minus z zero. equals 0. You get another line. another line. Now, a set of points, a collection of points gives you a line. But a set of lines, a collection of lines, gives you a plane, plane which you are now looking at. Does that make sense? Um, and these, these here are all kind of, these lines are in a line, as it were. So it's just, they're all just perfectly lined up together, which gives you that plane that you can see there. Okay? So, we need another way to do this. These sort of, I guess you could call them like Cartesian equations, right? They're not going to cut it, right? They don't give us equations of lines. If only we had some kind of object that was better at representing things in a 3D space that we could manipulate instead of just these Cartesian coordinates. Oh wait, what was the name of this topic again? It was 3D vectors. What if, what if we actually had vectors in our equation? How would this work? So underneath where you've written this, what I'd like you to do is just draw for me a, uh, we're going to draw it in 2D because we have 2D pieces of play, but just draw a Cartesian plane for me, okay? Um, what I'm going to show you here, I want in the back of your minds um, the argument that what I'm about to do, unlike here, it can extend into 3D and I want to see if you can work out why. So let's have two orthogonal axes here, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place, say, uh, a point like this up here, we'll call this capital A. And then I'm going to have um, another point here and we'll call it capital B. Okay. Now if I've got this A and this B set up, what I want to try and understand is how could I use vectors to help me articulate and express what is the equation of the line that passes through these two points. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get. What is the equation of AB? And of course it's going to go forever because it's a line, not an interval or anything like that. So I guess what I'm trying to find is the equation of this line here. That's what I'm after. Okay? How do I use vectors to help me here? Well, we recall that in two dimensions, kind of the way we did this was, we crafted an equation that would, if you put one thing in, you'll get exactly one thing out. One thing in, one thing out. Because then you've got a, a set of points. A set of points. How could I use vectors to articulate or describe this infinite set of points. Well, just as an example, if I, where did my black one go? Here it is. If I knew what this vector OA was, this vector OA, let's call it say U. If I knew what that vector was from the origin up to A, right? And then if I also knew what this vector was here from A to B, let's call this V, right? You can immediately tell me, in terms of vectors, uh, at least two points that lie on this line AB. I mean, those two points are A and B, right? How would you articulate them in vector terms? How do we get to A? Well, okay, so I've got U, U plus V, that's one of them. That that's, that's gets me to point B, which is on the line. How do I get to point A? It's even simpler. It's just you, right? So these two are on the line. Can someone give me, in terms of vectors, another point that's on the line? Jiao, just give me one. Oh, uh, U minus V. U minus V. Okay, where is this? U minus V, well, if that's V, then minus V is in the opposite direction. So it's, I guess it's somewhere up here. Is that okay? So you'd get that point there, and sure enough, it's on the line. Give me another one. Ren. U plus 2V, that'll do it, right? U plus 2V, you do U and then I guess you go V and then you go another V, right? In fact, you can do any multiple, you don't even need to stick to whole number, integer multiples of V. I could do U plus half of V, where would that be? U plus half of V is an important point actually. Uh, it's the midpoint of A and B, right? So there, right there, that's U, U plus half V. And u plus one and a half v, and u plus a million v, pi v, e v, whatever you want. Okay, uh, we better be careful with our letters because we'll get confused. K 
can I capture all of these in a single equation? The answer is of course I can, right? Look at what's similar, or what stays the same, and look at what changes. Tell me what stays the same. U, that's always the same at the front, right? There is always a V, but then the V kind of changes, because I've got I've got, a, I've got a constant multiple of v. So we just need to say, well, it's multiplied by some number of these. Now the customary pronumeral that we use here is a Greek letter, lambda, right here. Okay, so lambda, um, if there are any first person shooter fans in the room, it's that symbol that um, the game Half-Life is based on. Sorry, I'm just showing my age now, but anyway, okay. That's why I like lambdas. Anyway, so this here, this is the equation of a line. Um, again, customarily we would describe it as R. It's just kind of the conventional name for the equation of a line. And importantly, it is not just an equation of a line, it's a vector equation of a line because it uses vectors to explain what's going on. Okay?